Hello everyone, and welcome to Resurrection Lutheran Church for this Trinity Sunday. May your worship today be glorifying to God and a blessing to you. Amen. We begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. We now pause for a moment to reflect on our sins and the forgiveness we're promised in Jesus. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all of your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you, and also with you. A reading from 2 Corinthians chapter 13. Finally, brothers, rejoice, aim for restoration, comfort one another, agree with one another, live in peace, and the God of love and peace will be with you. Greet one another with a holy kiss. All the saints greet you. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 28th chapter. Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. And when they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God our Father, from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Our text for today's message is taken from 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 14, as previously read. Each day, over a hundred people read the email that we send out from our church entitled The Daily Good News. That is, each day, over a hundred people read online the good news coming from scriptures. Other people read from their own personal Bible. We are just concluding 1 Corinthians, that letter. It'll be Monday and Tuesday of this week. And we will begin on Wednesday, 2 Corinthians. Corinth is a real city that's located in Greece, about 45 miles west of Athens, the capital of Greece. Paul ministered to the Corinthians for over 18 months. And Paul wrote to the Corinthians more than any other church. The average church received a letter from Paul about six chapters in length. But Paul wrote to the Corinthians a total of 29 chapters in his two letters. 29 chapters, that's, that's huge in the New Testament. Now, 
That's nothing, though, for the Corinthians to boast about (laughs) because Paul wrote so much because they had so many problems. And Paul was trying to help this fledging congregation that was tempted to follow their culture, just like we are tempted. Paul was trying to encourage them and and correct them so that they follow the way of Jesus, not the way of, of the culture. Our text for today, though, is the final sentence of the 29 chapters written to the Corinthians. Now, this is a spoiler alert. If you don't want to hear the conclusion of First Corinthians of Second Corinthians, well, it's too bad. It's coming. Uh, the, this uh, final sentence that we're going to look at today, it's a final word from Paul. Final words are very important. You know, if you were writing a final word to a, a dear friend, what would that what would that last sentence say? Well, this is what we see in our text. We see the very last sentence that Paul is writing to dear friends. That include the, the readers back then, as well as you and I here today through the Holy Spirit. And what does Paul say in this last final sentence? Well, he points back to God and the precious gifts given through the one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We're going to look at those gifts here today in the final words to the Corinthians. The first part of the sentence, he says, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. What what is grace? Grace is undeserved kindness or undeserved favor. And this is exactly what we see in our Lord Jesus. Uh, We see undeserved kindness and undeserved favor emanating from him. We see his, his grace when he enters into our world. He could have ignored our sinful world, or really what we deserve, he could have just come and destroyed it. But out of grace, undeserved kindness, he entered into our world as a little baby born in Bethlehem. And then when he matured and grew up, we see his grace in caring for people. As Jesus ministered, he never turned down a person in need. He never looked the other way but he always responded to the need that was before him. He never said, I'm too busy for you. I helped enough people now. No, but he helped people with blindness, with deafness, people who were mute, people who were paralyzed, people who were sick with fever, people who had leprosy. He helped people in difficult situations, people who were in the midst of a storm, people who were hungry, Uh, people who were in an embarrassing situation of running out of wine for their wedding. He helped people with difficult problems in their life. Some were public sinners, known sinners. Some were rejected, some all alone. Some grieved the the loss of loved ones. Some uh, experienced racial discrimination, others sexual discrimination. But they all found a help from Jesus. They all experienced the grace of Jesus. And there was grace in his teaching. How wonderful it is to to have his teaching that we have in, in the scriptures. And he teaches us about how we can live with God and how we can live with others. Uh, we don't have to figure everything out ourselves because if we did, we would get lost pretty quickly. But Jesus teaches us and there's grace in his teaching. And there's grace mostly, most importantly, in his suffering and in his death for us. Even on the cross, Jesus thought of others. His mother was right there. And what did he say to her? Uh, He said, you're going to be taken care of by my disciple, John. And then there was the thief on the cross. Jesus cared for him. What did he say? He said, truly, truly, I say to you, today you'll be with me in paradise. And then there is all of us. When he prayed that prayer, Father, forgive them. There was grace, and that prayer was answered. And he bore our sins, giving us forgiveness. What grace shines from the cross. 
And then there's grace from Jesus in his resurrection. Death has been defeated. The big bully on the block has been knocked down. The grave has lost its sting. We have a sure hope that comes from the resurrection of Jesus Christ that strengthens us in the midst of losses in life, in the midst when we personally face death. We've got the grace of our Lord Jesus with us. So what is, what is Paul's prayer for the Corinthians, as well as for you and for me in these final words? He says, all of this grace, all of this favor, it's undeserved in kindness from Jesus, may it be with you, right? And he says, be with you all, every single person who is listening. It's not like you're excluded. No, may this grace of Jesus be with you all, and it is with you. The second phrase Paul uses is the love of God. And as we think about God, well, what's he like? Well, we can use some big theological words I've got got on the screen, like uh, omnipotent, he's all-powerful, omniscient, he's all-knowing, omnipresent, he's present everywhere. But there's another word that's used less often, actually, and uh, we could call it omnibenevolent. I can't even say it. Omnibenevolent. Benevolent. That is, he is all caring. He is all caring. He is all kind. Or we could say he is all loving. And this is Paul's prayer. He doesn't say, may the power of God be with you, or may the Lord's present with you, or, or the all-knowing God's with you, but he says, may the love of God be with you. And that love of God, God made you in his image. And there's nothing else made in his image. We see this picture here of Blackhead Mountain, beautiful mountain, right? And in that mountain, there's deer and bear and chipmunks and all kinds of beautiful trees and right now some wild flowers. And above that mountain, there are birds that are flying that are just wonderful to behold. And then above that, the birds is is the sky, which is so beautiful. But all those things that I mentioned, they're not created in the image of God. But you see those people in the picture? Each one of them is created in the image of God. God lovingly places his image upon them. But what happens is we smear or deface that image in our own life through our own sin. Here's a picture of the Mona Lisa just a few weeks ago. Mona Lisa at the Louvre, Mag- Louvre uh, Museum in Paris. It was smeared with cake, and there was glass protecting it, so it wasn't, wasn't damaged at all. But we don't smear the image of God with cake. We smear it with, with sin, with selfishness, with greed, with me first. And that defaces the image of God. But God still loves us. He loves us so much that he gave his only Son for us. And that's the defining definition of what love is. This is real love, 1 John 4.10 says. Not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son as a sacrifice to take away our sins. That's the love of God for us. Even though we deface the image in us, Out of love, he restores and renews that image by giving his son to take away all of our sin. And Paul says to the Corinthians, that love of God, that's with you. May it be with you. And again, he says, all of you. May it be with all of you here who are listening right now. And then the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. The fellowship of the Holy Spirit is sometimes a little harder to to define, but I saw an article written by Howard Schneider in Christianity Today, and he says there are two dimensions are implied in this passage. 
the vertical dimension of the believer's fellowship with God and the horizontal dimension, his fellowship with others, believers, through the Holy Spirit. And so that, that symbol of the cross, there's, there's two dimensions of the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. He, he brings us fellowship with God and with one another. And so we see that, that we have a connection with God, the Holy Spirit, because he reigns inside of us. All of you are baptized. Your bodies now are temples of the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is in you. And so we have fellowship with God through the Holy Spirit who is in us. And then we have fellowship with what the Holy Spirit created, the church of God, with individual people who are part of the body of Christ. We are connected to them. And so we live in that fellowship and we love one another, we support one another, we pray for one another. I hope that happens a lot within our church. That's, that's allowing that fellowship that the Holy Spirit establishes to grow, allowing those connections to, to, to be uh, supported. That's the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. It's with God and it's with one another. And Paul says, may that fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Again, no one is excluded from that. May it be with you all. All. After 29 chapters, dealing with all sorts of issues, all kinds of sinful problems that was in the Corinthian church, Paul's prayer for the Corinthians, as well as for you and me, is one where he brings in the truth of, of who God is, the triune God, one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And this is not just Paul's desire, but this is God's desire for each one of us. And so I conclude with those beautiful words that Paul concluded with. And they're words for you and for your life. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for revealing yourself to us as the one living God, but yet three, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And thank you for the grace we have in Jesus. And thank you for the love you have for us. And thank you that we have the fellowship of the Holy Spirit working in us and through us. Give us these wonderful gifts, O Lord. Help us to receive them with an open heart. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen.
We now join in confessing our faith together by reciting the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. If you have not already done so this week, I would like to encourage you to reflect upon your tithes and offerings to the Lord. If you would like to mail in your tithes or offerings, you may do so to the mailing address that is on the screen. If you would like to give your tithes or offerings online, you may do so on our website. Simply go to the website rlc.life and click the Give Online button. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.